What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sick Eric Tech, and today we're going to be going on over the camera of the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra with One UI 6.0, the final beta version, but the actual official version is about to get dropped any day soon. So let's go ahead and jump down in. So this is the actual layout of the camera UI now of the device. You get your video, you get your photo pro and things like that. And then you also get your more, which is going to be your expert raw food panorama, super slow motion, slow motion, hyperlapse, director's view and single take director's view is pretty much going to film the rear cameras and the front cameras. So that's pretty cool. You could also change where you want that window to be at and what lenses to use and things like that. So that is very cool that you can do a lot of cool things with the new app. And as far as the changes go, so now you get your options for over here for 12, 50, and 200 megapixels. So nice and easy to get to. So if you want to switch those, you can do so. And you could go all the way up to 200 megapixels to get you the best image quality if you want to do things like that. Or you could just keep it on 12 megapixel. You'll get your timer down here. You can go from 2, 5, and 10. And you could quickly change your aspect ratio. So if you want to do one by one, you could do one by one and you know four by three if you want to do things like that. So fantastic. You get those options. You also get your your flash was going to be off, on, and auto. And then uh, as far as everything else, you get your motion photo on. So that's pretty cool. If you want to take a motion photo, you could view the motion on there. So if you got something moving, it will take several different photos and have a little motion photo, which is pretty cool. Usually I like to keep that off. And you get your filters. So you get your face uh, filters and your regular filters over here on this side. So that's pretty cool if you want to do that. If you go into settings, you get scan documents and text, so you can automatically scan your documents, so that's really cool. You can also remove unwanted objects if you want to do things like that. You get your QR codes, you get your shot suggestions, and you get your advanced intelligent options, which will increase the shutter speed. So if you want to have it maximum, this will increase the maximum time you could take a actual shot. And it'll be really, really fast. It'll prioritize speed over the uh, image processing. So if you want to do things like that, you can. Usually I keep it at medium. And you also get your scene optimizer, which you can only turn on if you are in maximum mode. And then as you can see, it does turn on right there. So that's a little weird. Scene optimizer is still there, but you could only use it in maximum mode. You get your uh, swipe shutter button to take you know burst and things like that you can change that if you want to change that you get your watermark which has been updated and you can update the name you could add the date on there you could add the time on there and you could add the alignment so if you want it off to the side middle or the right hand side you could put it up top if you want or keep it at the bottom so that's pretty cool you have all those different options usually i just uh, take off the dates. If you want to click on the date, it gives you different formats for the date. And I'll just keep the uh, regular uh, Samsung Galaxy S23 watermark on there. You get your save selfies as previewed. So if you want your selfies to be swapped around, you can do things like that. Swipe up and down to switch to cameras. Now this will give you the option to uh, swipe up to switch through your cameras and things like that. So if you're on photo, you swipe up or down or side in this case, there you are. It'll give, you know, it'll switch between your front facing and your rear facing photos. Some people like that, some people don't just because of all the swiping on here, it might interfere with it. So that's pretty cool. You go back into settings and then uh, you get your auto frames per second. So use 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. Depending on your light, it should switch to give you the most best option for low light. If you go into advanced video options, you get the uh, high efficiency or the H.264, which is most compatible. I don't like filming in high efficiency just because some of the uh, video editors don't like it. 
you get your high bitrate videos you want to do that hdr10 videos and you get your zoom in mic so if you have this on and you say you're at a concert and you zoom all the way into like 30 50 or even 100 it'll keep that audio and zoom in and take that audio on there too so you get a lot better detailed audio and you also get your 360 audio recording as well on that you get your tracking auto focus keep the rear camera focus on a select object even if they move you got your grid lines which i always do like to activate just because i take a lot of photos and uh, it helps me align things if i want to do comparisons and things like that location tags shooting methods so you go into shooting methods you get your press your volume buttons to either zoom in or zoom out or control sound or just take a picture voice commands floating shutter button and then show palm so if you uh, show your palm it'll automatically take a photo you get your vibration feedback and camera assistant if you download a camera assistant through good lock you'll get some extra features on here optical quality crop zoom uh, auto hdr picture softening and things like that and you got your prioritized speed you know focus over speed if you want to do things like that camera timeout and this will uh increase the timeout of your camera so if you have your camera on usually it times out very quickly but now you can control that dim screen while recording just to save battery life and you know not get so hot clean preview on hdmi uh, displays and then you also get your reset options about camera and things like that so very very cool if you go into video you also get these options too so if you want to switch between video you get nicely layout version up here ak uhd full hd and hd and then you could also change your frames per second up here on the fly you could also change your aspect ratio so that's pretty cool you get your uh, super steady on so if you're recording something and you're running or something is running and you're trying to record them super steady will be on you could also turn that off and of course you also do have your flash so that's really cool all of these do apply for pro mode too so you get all your settings over here for pro mode you get your manual focus speed and things like that you could also change things to a dial if you want to for your iso and things like that you could change everything on the fly to control everything and just make everything look a lot better and have more creativity and more control over your photos and things like that so very nice you do also get your you know your aspect ratios your timers and your flash and all of that you could also zoom in and zoom out or use whichever uh, mode you want to which as far as your lenses go if you go over here to your main camera you also get more options for your zooming in so you could do your ultra wide you could do your main you could zoom in two times three times or ten times or if you hold and long press you could zoom in all the way up to a hundred times zoom and as you can see it does switch through those lenses so that's pretty cool and you also get your options over here off to the side for zooming in if you go into selfie mode you get your one and your two person so you can do an ultra wide if you want to fit more people into the picture and do things like that so that's pretty cool swap on over to the other camera you get your portrait video mode which is also one times and three times zoom for your portrait video and you can use this on the rear facing camera so if you want to get that bokeh effect that's pretty awesome you could do so which portrait video and that is a new mm -hmm. thing and that is a new thing last year on the s22 you couldn't use portrait video on the front i believe or maybe it was pro mode on the front now you can do pro mode on the front and on the back of course if you go right here swap it around you get pro video mode on the front facing camera so that's pretty cool last year on the s22 you couldn't do pro video on the front you get your night mode again with your different focal links and your options and this is that floating uh, shutter button that i was telling you guys about you could take some pictures with that you can move this off to the top off to the bottom whichever if you're left-handed you can switch it over here and take pictures like so that's pretty cool if you want to put it back just put it back if you want it back just long press and move it to wherever you want or just put it back where it belongs so pretty cool options on here you get a lot of different options i like the new camera layout for one ui6 it looks really good it's all cleaned up very nicely over here especially up top 
to uh, determine what aspect ratio and your um, your megapixels and things like that. It's very cleaned up, and this is what you would expect for the final version of One UI 6.0. So can't wait for the updates. It's going to be awesome. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, and I will see you next time here on Sick Garrett Tech. Peace.